back to the channel, everyone. Uh, today, me and my little helper, come here. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. We are going to do the hubs. Um, this is probably the same for most pop ups. Of course, ours is a Coleman Sea Pine. Um, but first and foremost, I'm going to take off our little, our little lock, um, get it up in the air, get the wheel removed. And we'll we'll come back. All right, so I have lifted it up. Hold on, I have it lifted up. Um, if you have your stabilizer jacks down, you probably want to at least lift them up on the opposite side. It's hooked up to the truck, so it can't go anywhere. Um, for this specific one, this is a 1360, so I'm going to go ahead and zip off this tire, and then we'll bring you back once again to see how we disassemble this hub. Alright, so with the first step to get these things off, uh, there's a pretty much a hub cap. You're going to want to get a screwdriver, some type of chisel, something you can get behind this lip right here. Um, this one's kind of already started because I had to pull, oops, sorry, I had to pull this one part previously to get what size of uh, the hub seal. So I'm just gonna once you get it started you can kinda go around and just use the screwdriver to pop it off. Alright. So this one was actually done previous but the seal was leaking so I want to take all this part, I'm gonna re-grease it, put a new seal and we'll go from there. All right, so next there's gonna be a cotter pin in here. Um, yeah. Let me wipe some, some of this grease away so you can actually see it. There we go. So there's a pin that goes through the actual uh, axle shaft and it keeps this castle nut from moving. So the first step is you have to bend cotter pin back straight. Um, these are pretty cheap, so I would recommend not reusing these, but honestly, like, it'll be okay if you do. Alright. There we go, we're just gonna bend these straight. Grab the top. There we go. Okay. So, after you get that cotter pin, uh, this foot joint does well. There's a bunch of different things that you can use. But, we're going to go ahead and spin off this castle nut. So, the cotter nut went around here. There's a hole through the axle shaft where that cotter pin went through. To get to remove these, you just literally pull. I've had this one off. Again, I had to find out the size of the the uh, hub seal. But you'll have one bearing, and then if you keep pulling off. On the back, there's your hub seal, and there's another bearing inside here. So, you're going to want to check the axle shaft, clean it, make sure there's not any scoring. Sorry if you can't see that. Make sure there's not any scoring on here. Also, on this back part, where that's where the seal actually has made it to the surface and seals around this part. Um, again, I'm going to get this out. You want to be careful. Can't really do this one handed. But you just want to get something in underneath it. And they make special tools, seal pullers. But um, you can use screwdrivers and stuff like that. We're going to get a screwdriver in there. Um, get underneath there and pop it out. You want to be careful to not nick the actual outside surface because that's what it seals against. 
this is a grease type so it's not a huge deal because there's ones that have actual fluid in it but um yeah we're gonna get pop that out get the new one we're gonna clean these bearings really well inspect them um there's on the inside i forgot to mention this but that's called bearing race and that's where the bearing actually rides this metal piece right here so we want to do a good inspection of, of all of that uh let me pull this seal clean and then i'll show you what we need to do next all right so with these bearing races like i was talking about i said inspect them uh what you're going to want to do is just check all along the inside the shiny metal you want to make sure there's not a bunch of big gouges um, it's not discolored you want to make sure it's smooth you're going to want to fill in here and you can feel if there's actually nicks and scrapes just want to clarify that so it's a new day um everything is cleaned i just took what i had some different solvents and air clean out those bearings okay so it's been about a week we finally got our actual seals in uh, they actually sent us wrong ones, but they made it right. Etrailers.com. Everything is clean. Um, I took some solvent and went through these bearings, clean them up as well as I could. Of course, I don't have anything, and I normally would because we're in the middle of cleaning. I mean, moving. Sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. Show you how to pack those bearings. Get this hub reinstalled. I just got some Master Pro high temp disc brake uh, wheel bearing grease. This isn't anything special. Uh, O'Reilly's or AutoZone. I know there's probably better grease out there, but we're going to make sure we keep this grease constantly. Um, so we're just going to go with this Master Pro from O'Reilly's or AutoZone or something. How to properly pack a bearing. Alright, so this is kind of a messy job. Um, some people like to wear gloves, but I. I feel like it gets in the way. So I'm just going to take a good amount, put it in the palm of my hand. And you're going to take the bearing with the larger side on the bottom, and you're just going to sit there. And literally, just the small bearing is kind of difficult, but hopefully, you can see that you're just going to keep taking little, little snippets. Um, and there's a million videos on how to pack bearings by hand, but I just want to show you guys. So you can see it starts actually coming out between those roller bearings. So you're just going to keep going through. Taking a little, a little bit at a time. Again, this smaller bearing is a little bit more difficult just to hold on to, but... And you can see it starts pushing through those bearings. Um, not difficult, just messy. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second one and we'll get back, back to this hub. All right, so we have both bearings packed. Um, we'll go ahead and put this in the rear of the, of the hub. Um, has a bunch of grease in there. So next we're gonna take the hub seal and that'll go in there. So let's get to that. So just took that piece of wood and you're able to evenly um, drive that seal in. So that's going to keep the rear bearing in. Um, then we're going to go put the hub actually on there, put the front, and start reinstalling it. One thing is I would put a little bit of grease along the ceiling portion just to make sure you don't damage it while it's going on. It'll make it go on there a little easier. Um, just be careful. Put that in there gently. Ah, 
There you go. Okay, and then I know a lot of them have an actual washer, but this just uses the castle nut to keep everything together. Um, a lot have a washer than the castle nut. All right, so for this, we're going to start tightening up as we're spinning. Just make sure everything gets seated properly. Um, and then I'm going to get my pliers and I'll show you what. Watch out. So, slip joints probably aren't the best for this, but I mean, they work fine. Um, we're just going to tighten it down while we're spinning it. And like I said, that's just going to make sure everything is seated properly. Okay, so you can see how there's a lot of resistance. Um, like I said, the reason we do that make sure everything is seated properly and this hub is on there correctly from that point we're going to go ahead and loosen it and we're going to tighten it by hand just a little bit of play in it keep that there but as you can see she moves freely That's what we want. Next, we'll get the cotter pin, put it there, and then on to the next part. All right, so we're gonna take our cotter pin. This is the one, so this was brand new besides the last time I put it in there, so we just had to, we had to move it. Take something that's not a hammer to hammer it. All right, so. Daddy. Thanks, babe. I'm trying not to mess up I know. this hub at all. I wasn't talking to you, babe. I know, Dad. There we go. Good job, Dad. So, thanks, baby. Tiny bit of play. Tiny bit of play. Okay. So now this one's done, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so everything's together. Um, the biggest thing, it's pretty simple. Biggest thing is to make sure that this is not completely loose, but not too tight. If it's too tight, it's gonna heat up and you're gonna have a hub explode. But um, yeah, so now that we're done with this one, we're gonna go to the other side and get to work on that. So please explain what we're doing today. Come over here. Don't touch it. It's dirty, okay? All right. Go ahead. Did the tablet show you how to redo the hub? Yeah. Yeah.
All right, that'll do it for the hubs on this trailer. Um, this design is the same on a lot of small trailers, so don't you think it's pop-ups? Um, once again, pretty easy job. It's just important to have that castle nut tightened down correctly. Um, a lot of things have a correct spec. They want you to torque it down to a certain amount and then release it, hand do it. Um, there's really not anything for these smaller ones just because it's not a very large torque to get these things done. But uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. If you guys liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time.